Why hello there friends, it's Emma here, the Bookish Princess. I hope you all had a very merry and blessed Christmas. Opening presents on Christmas morning, I got so many books. All of my, my family and friends know that books are the best gift and there were so many exciting ones that I had never even heard of before and I thought it would be fun to do a quick what I got for Christmas. Let's do it. So, you know what, I think I'm actually going to start not with the pile, but with this very special book because when I opened this one, I was like, oh, okay, I think I have to film a little a video um, to unbox this with the Bookish Kingdom because I think you guys will all enjoy this. Athos found this on eBay. I'm not sure where exactly. It's a used book. Are you ready? I, w I was so excited when I opened it because it is a friend of ours. Osa Johnson. Osa Johnson wrote I Married Adventure, which has a fabulous zebra print cover. I have that book um, as well, but I did not have a vintage version of the giraffe print cover, which is Four Years in Paradise. I have actually read this book. It, it is available in paperback. Um, it's so good. It's so worth getting. Martin and Osa Johnson were safari photographers and videographers back when film was brand new, like in the 1910s and 1920s and 1930s. And they went and captured images of wildlife in their native environment like before anybody else basically did and Osa wrote about it so beautifully it's so much fun to read about their adventures four years in paradise is when Martin and Osa went to Africa and lived for four years at this remote lake in Kenya and they got just absolutely incredible footage because you know there were no people around they you know getting all their equipment out there was just incredible and this really dives deep into that one trip um the i married adventure tells about their entire lives together and that is also wonderful but when i got this i was very excited just to open it and then athos is like op open the cover so i open the cover and my jaw drops it is a signed edition is that not incredible? Osa Johnson herself once wrote in this, uh, which is just so special, with best African wishes, Osa Johnson. So I'm just really excited to have this on my shelf. I'm obviously gonna have to take good care of it because it's a little bit beat up, but it's very thrilling to have this. Actually, I have another Osa Johnson um, gift that I got this year. Um, if you watch my videos, then you've heard me talk about Osa Johnson before. But um, the Martin and Osa Safari Museum in Chanute, Kansas, um, they found my videos and reached out to me. Conrad, the director, is so nice, um, and it's always been fun to exchange notes with him and hear about what's going on at the museum. I really want to get out there. Athos and I were just talking about how we need to get out and, and visit this museum in person. It's, it's in Kansas, but um, uh, they sent me a little magnet, um, which was very kind. So many thanks to the the um, Safari Museum last year, they sent me this gorgeous um, book ornament of the I Married Adventure book. So actually, I think that someone on Etsy made that and then they kind of stocked it in their museum shop. But someone needs to make the giraffe version. If I knew how to glass blow, I would make that ornament myself. But anyway, I just thought you guys would enjoy seeing this and I'm so excited to have an, an Osa Johnson signed edition on my shelf. So see, that was kind of the most exciting book. But Athos did find me another book. He was at a used book sale and he had texted me and said, what are some authors you're looking for? He didn't find any of the authors on my list, but you know, used book sales, I feel like that's part of the fun. There's a sort of serendipity about used bookstores. Like God has one book in that you know, mass of, of piles for you. And you don't know what it is, but like it'll speak to you when you see it. And I feel like Athos found the perfect one for me. He picked up Hans Brinker uh, or The Silver Skates. This is by Mary Mapes Dodge. And last year or a couple years ago, I read a book, I can't remember the name about it now, but it was about um, a writer who was kind of learning more about classic fairy tales and people who wrote classic fairy tales. And she had a chapter on Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates. And I had never really, like I, I vaguely know the story, but I'd never read the original and never, you know, familiarized myself with um, Mary Mape Stodge before. And so it really made me curious. And I thought at some point I have to get this book and check it out. And this one is such a beautiful addition. And I think it was super cheap that Athos picked up. Um, but yeah, just really fun. Very exciting. I love used books. Um, and Athos does as well. We've seen his collection of antique books. I did get him an antique book. I took a picture of it. Um, I'll have to put it on the screen here. It was like from a series of this writer who had visited the houses of famous people back in the 1800s, <laughs> this writer. Um, and he had visited the, the homes of various scientists. So that was the, the book that I got for Athos. Some of these books I did actually 
actually ask for and request. This one I did ask Santa to bring. It's Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. It's from this beautiful Image Classic series. The spines of these look so gorgeous when you line them up um, together. In Charlotte Mary Young, Pillars of the House, this book that I read this year, she quotes Francis de Sales in the original French, which sadly this is not the original French. This is a translation, but I haven't actually read this book. I've come across many quotations from Francis de Sales, but I think it would be really great to sit down and read it. The back says, Francis de Sales' introduction to the devout life has remained a uniquely accessible and relevant treasure of devotion for nearly 400 years. As Bishop of Geneva in the first quarter of the 17th century, Francis de Sales saw to the spiritual needs of everyone from the poorest peasants to court ladies. Very excited to dive into this. This one was not on my list, but my mom saw it and thought I needed it. And I really love it. I'm pretty sure I've seen it on other people's bookstagrams and booktubes. So it's very fun to have it on my shelves. It's a poem for every winter day, edited by Ali Asiri. And the, the cover, the cover of it is just so lovely. Very excited um, to read this. And you got the shiny spine as well. Very excited to read this throughout the winter. Next up, I have a little day planner, which I'm so excited about. This is Hobonio, Hobonachi, Hobonichi is the name of the, um, name of the day planner. And it has this lovely design of kitty cats. So I always have a day planner and I like to use them as like a scrapbook. So, you know, ticket stubs and fun little bits of paper, um, that are nice memories I put in the day planner. But the problem is then I can't really use it in a practical way because I want to keep it as a scrapbook. So it's not, you know, I don't necessarily want things written in and then scratched out, but I feel like this one will be perfect because I can kind of put it in my purse and I can use this one more to keep organized. And then I did already pick out my day planner this year. I decided to go for the Blessed Is She. Um, this is the academic planner for 2024. It says, you are standing on holy ground, which I love this one because it has all of the saints days and like days of hol uh, holy days of obligation and just like some, some kind of bullet journal-esque um, things to write what you're grateful for when you've done rosary or when you've gone to confession. This is like the kind of ideal size for a journal for me, but I'm really excited to have both of them because I feel like they'll both, they'll fulfill different uses. This next book was another reason why I wanted to film this video because it's so unique. I had no idea it existed. I opened this and my brothers, they um, wrapped my, they used the same wrapping paper to wrap some of my presents. So I didn't know which came from which person. And like, I, I opened this and I thought it came from Athos. I was like, whoa, Athos, Snow White and Jonathan Pajot. And Athos is like, oh wow, that's cool. And I'm like, D didn't you get me this for me? And poor Athos on the other side of the tree is like, oh, that, that was me. But yeah, I had no idea. Jonathan Pajot did a Snow White. I believe this is new. It says Symbolic World Press. I think Porthos said it was, um, uh, Kickstarter thing, but apparently this says it's the first of eight fairy tale books. So I don't know how many of the other fairy tale books are out yet. This one though is so beautiful. It's illustrated by Heather Pollington. Has a nice little book plate. Actually, it also has, where is it? A bookmark, which is kind of incredible. Look at this bookmark. And this, um, the fun thing is this is actually from the book. Um, and yeah, the illustrations are just really, really lovely and it is the the tale of snow white that you're familiar with like even from say the disney version lots of elements are familiar um but then he's kind of reinterpreted reorganized different elements um in a really beautiful way so and the illustrations in particular look i feel like that looks like cymbeline <laughs> especially after reading Tolkien's Tree and Leaf, which I talked about in my top 2023 um, reads, and then reading Norwegian fairy tales. Um, I feel like there's just this richness to fairy tales that I'm seeing, um, thanks to, to Tolkien's expert analysis. But yeah, I do really enjoy Jonathan Pajot. His um, lecture from the ARC conference, the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship, was really good. Um, and he's also on Tammy Peterson's podcast. I need to listen to more of those episodes, but I love her podcast so much. She has such a gentle delivery and like the conversations are so wonderful. I love Jordan Peterson as well, but Tammy Peterson, if you haven't checked her out, she is excellent. Yeah, very excited to have this. Definitely want to check out the rest of the series. I'm not sure if it's out yet. The Tale of Snow White and the Widow Queen is the first of eight fairy tale books written by Jonathan Pajot. Together, these stories will weave an enchanting tapestry of well-known characters and narratives, ushering modern readers into a fairy tale world worthy of our great heritage. Speaking of fairy tales, uh, this might look familiar in my 2023 
uh, Top Reads video, I talked about um, Norwegian Tales, which is from the same series by Chronicles Books, um, and they're really beautiful. The book, the book itself is out of reach, otherwise I would pick it up and show it to you, but you can go watch the video and uh, see it. But I did put this on my list because I want to collect the series. This is Tales of India, folk tales from Bengal, Punjab, and Tamil Nadu, illustrations by Swabu Kohli and Viplav Singh. And yeah, just really, really excited to dive into these because I loved the Norwegian, Swedish, and Finnish tales. And they're just so beautifully laid out, beautiful illustration for each story, um, and really fun, intriguing stories in the Norwegian one. And I'm sure these will be just as good. The Rat's Wedding. 2023 got me started on a fairy tale kick and we're definitely carrying that energy into 2024. My mom was saying that it's a little difficult to buy books for me because my collection is already so carefully curated. <laughs> but one area where I don't have a lot of books is cookbooks. I just don't own very many of them. And this, I feel like, was the perfect um, thing for me because I love breakfast and I love pastries. Whenever I watch The Great British Bake Off, which I don't have Netflix, so I like never watch that anymore. But whenever I used to watch that, I would always end up baking. And now I feel like I'm definitely going to have to to do some baking because, oh, don't these look delicious? I think that morning breakfast is like my favorite meal of the day. Breakfast just has the best variety. It's the most desserty meal, really, if we're honest. <laughs> and I'm all about dessert. Raspberry caramel bubble bread cardamom pistachio twist look at that i really want to try something like this with all the twists anyway very excited to have a new cookbook on my list and then one last one so this i had actually put on my wish list but i put it on my wish list a while ago and then forgotten about it so it was very exciting to open it i went and visited edith wharton's house the mount in lennox massachusetts this year i did do a video edith wharton's birthday is in January, so I might try to get that edited and up on her birthday because that would be a fun day. But um, they had some books of hers uh, in the gift shop, but then also just in the museum. And this one was sadly not in the gift shop. I would 100% have bought it in the gift shop. I did have to get it on eBay um, used, but this was a beautiful copy. It is Italian villa Villas and Their Gardens, the original 1904 edition. This is like a republication of the original 1904 edition. Um, Edith Wharton with pictures by Maxfield Parrish. This is the Mount Press Rizzoli. Um, and ah, oh, it is just, is it not stunning? I mean, how gorgeous is this book? Edith Wharton is, of course, known for her fiction, things like The House of Mirth. A lot of her books dealt with the superficial New York society, which she was a part of. Um, the Mount is her gorgeous house, which she went around Europe and got all this inspiration from these different houses and then put it into her own house, which sadly she then only lived there about 10 years um, because she had a difficult marriage. Her husband was uh, went through some mental health issues and they ended up divorcing. And when they divorced, she um, lost the house and moved to Europe. I actually really prefer Edith Wharton's nonfiction. It's funny, I one time saw an observation online that like, oh, once you're mature enough, like you graduate from Jane Austen to Edith Wharton. And I was like, mm. like if you only read Jane Austen in a shallow way, and, and some people do, then yeah, Edith Wharton's gonna be deeper than that. But if you read Jane Austen carefully in a deep way, Jane Austen goes deeper than Edith Wharton manages in her fiction, I would say. I feel like Edith Wharton's fiction gets stuck in despair. It doesn't make it past despair, which Jane Austen, if you read it in the deep way, if you really pay attention, her characters do make it past despair and make it back around to true joy, not naive, shallow joy, but true, earned, <laughs> painful joy. In my Jane Austen ranking video that I did earlier this year, I talk a little bit more about like that real depth, what that real depth in Jane Austen is. And I feel like the real depth in Jane Austen, Edith Wharton just never makes it. But when you read her nonfiction, you realize that in her real life, she did not get stuck in despair. She had all sorts of incredible interests and projects and she appreciated joy and beauty in her life. And she did so much during the world wars um, in France. So yeah, for me, I get more out of Edith Wharton's nonfiction than her fiction, which is why I'm so excited to have this on my shelf and to check it out. And it's just so gorgeous. There is another from Rizzoli Press Ah, it's another one of her sort of home decor books and I need to look it up because I want to get that one too. <laughs> 
This beautiful hardcover facsimile is carefully reproduced from the first edition published in 1904 and includes all the original plates. It is published in association with the Mount, the organization founded to preserve and restore the Massachusetts estate that Edith Wharton designed and built in 1902 based on the principles she outlined in her first book, The Decoration of Houses. I think there's also um, a reproduction of The Decoration of Houses book. So. so anyway, very, very thankful to all my lovely family and friends. I'd love to hear if you guys got or gave any exciting books um, for Christmas. Definitely let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I'll talk to you all again soon. Until then, stay bookish. Bye, friends.